Hey guys, if you are new, my name is Vanessa and yes, I am sharing another meal prep. If you guys watched the last one that I shared, I didn't get through everything that I wanted to get done. So it has been a little over a week, but I still have all the items that I wanted to get meal prepped for my family just to make life a little easier. Plus we were gifted a few food items that I knew I needed to figure out something to do with them so they didn't go bad. So that is exactly what I have to share with you guys today. Let me go ahead and get you down to my counter and let's start meal prepping. All right, so we are going to start out not with any food, but I also like to organize a few different spaces, just what's working for me in the house. So I picked these little bottle holders up off of Amazon. I'll have them linked in my store in the description box, but I'm just using them for wine in the fridge. Here they are. They are working perfectly. All right, next up, I am going to make some spicy crackers. I've actually shared this recipe before. I'm pretty sure I have a really old video for it, but it is in the cookbook that Nicole, Kira, and I put together a couple years ago, which is also in my Amazon store. I am doing it a little different this time. I saw these mini saltine crackers and I thought they were so cute, more like bite size. And my kids love Cheez-Its and I thought the sizes worked perfectly together. So that's the only change I'm making. Other than that, I'm just following my recipe with the oil, garlic powder, red chili flakes, and uh, ranch dressing or the ranch mix. Super yummy and most of my kids, not all of them, but most of them enjoy them. My husband also really, really loves these. They are a little time consuming though, or they have to sit for, well, at least I do. I let them sit for about two hours and I turn the bag every 15 minutes. So it'll be like on its back, on its side, on the top, on the bottom, and I'll just keep doing that for two hours. I realized I still had a ton of Cheez-Its left over. So in order for them to stay fresher longer, I put them in a airtight container. And then after my two hours was up, I went ahead and poured my spicy crackers into two containers, one to keep at the house and one for my husband to take to work. Okay, something that I really love to meal prep or food prep is hard boiled eggs and my kids love them. I did a dozen, six of them I am going to utilize for my kids so they can snack on them over the week. And then the other six, I went ahead and whipped up just a super easy egg salad. And my husband and I ate that with cucumbers uh, over the two days, the weekend for a lunch and just snacking on them. If you guys haven't tried egg salad using cucumbers instead of crackers or on uh, as a sandwich, they are super, super yummy. So I just do the three, three, five method really. Really, it's just whatever I'm doing, I wait. And when I get to it, I get to it. I love using the Instant Pot. So what that method is, is I cook them for three minutes. I let them uh, natural release before I release any of the pressure for three to four minutes again just depending on what I'm doing then I put them in an ice bath for like three to five minutes again depending what I'm doing so you guys can see here that uh, I do not have the gray ring when I was doing the five 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 method using five minutes for all of it I would probably about 70% of the time get that gray ring which just means they're a little overdone so that's why I backed up to three minutes I've got six for my kids and then again, I'm making a super simple egg salad. Sometimes I will add like celery or pickle, some kind of crunch, but this time I just left it plain with the mayo, mustard, salt, and pepper. All 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and prep two cucumbers. So these, I just rinsed, like did a quick rinse on them, cutting off the little ends, and then I am just slicing them, cutting them into half moons, and I'm doing two. One of them will be for snacking, and then the other one, we're having like a pasta dinner in a couple nights, and I wanted to go ahead and prep that one to add into the salad. That way it's already done. I knew I was gonna cut one up, and by just doing both of them at the same time, this saved me a little bit of time um, later on in the week when I was getting dinner together. Oh, and these little containers, I was influenced by Kim. I got a lot of questions last time, and I mentioned that I got them off of Amazon, so yes, they are in my store in the description box as well. All right, I always pick up cherub tomatoes, and I leave them on my counter. So I just pour a little vinegar in there, and I am rinsing them off, and like I said, I just leave these on my counter, and every time my kids walk into the kitchen, they just grab a couple. And I do start off by leaving the paper towel under it just to catch any of that excess water. Then strawberries, we constantly go through strawberries, whether it's a two pound package or one pound, it's gone by the end of the week. So this is just a fresh package that I picked up that I'm going to go ahead and clean off and cut. That way the kids can grab some whenever they want. And again, with these containers on the other side, you guys are going to see in just a second are the leftovers from last week. I bought a bunch of grapes and this was the last little bit of them. Okay, I was gifted a huge bag of tomatoes and I knew we were not going to be able to eat them because I had already planned my meals for that week and I, like I said, I just knew that we were not going to be able to use these before they went bad. So I've never done this before. I, wanna, I went ahead and just blended them all up and put them into little quart size freezer bags in 16 ounces. Cause typically when you go to the store, you get a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. And I just, like I said, blended them up. I didn't put any seasoning in them. That way, when it comes time to me wanting to use them, I can mix them with whatever and I can flavor it at that time. So that is what I did. I've got several bags here. I did keep a few tomatoes out and that way we could mix it with some mozzarella that we had. So I was also gifted this 12 pack of chicken and we're actually not huge fans of chicken. Whenever we're doing like chicken salad or things like that, we use rotisserie chicken or I will bake up some chicken that we have on hand. So I decided to go ahead and use this to make some homemade dog food. And no, I am not draining them right now, but I am at the end. I figured it'd be easier and not get all over my hands if I just uh, put them all into a bowl and then drained it like that. So that's what I'm opting to do. And then all I'm adding in, I just went into my pantry to see what I had to add to the chicken. And I had some pumpkin and some peas, which the dogs really love. So that is what I opted to mix into the chicken for the dogs. Okay, no voiceover for this part. We are in my garage and I uh, picked up some more Cokes and sparkling water and of course, I've got a puppy teething really bad. So he is chewing on the boxes. But I'm gonna get these drinks in our fridge out here. So I figured I would just show you guys. We've got one milk and one orange juice in the house and then I'm, doing some freezer meals coming up. So I've got a lot of meat in here, but normally we just keep drinks in here. So the kids still have plenty of Gatorades and juice boxes. I have a couple miscellaneous drinks, but I'm gonna get my sparkling waters right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the Cokes right here. Normally I keep the Cokes right there, but 
because I am utilizing this space for the meat and I have it yet to make the freezer meals. That is the plan for now. All right, I've got my waters in here. This week I picked up the LaCroix in the lime and then the AHA in the lime and watermelon. Definitely feeling that lime this summer. And then I've got the Cokes right here. The uh, zero sugar is what we enjoy. So that is stocked up again. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna make some cookies. I wanted to include this in the, should have been the last video I shared maybe, the sheet pan recipes. I really wanted to make this six in one cookie bars. I just ran out of time, but I do still have all the ingredients. So I'm gonna go ahead and cook them and I still wanted to share them. So I'm just adding it into this meal prep video, but six different kinds of cookies. How cool is that? I really hope this turns out. So we're going to go ahead and whip this up. I'll try to find this. I've had this printed out for a while. I hope I saved it, but I'll try to look it up and link it in the description box in case you guys want to see the exact measurements and all the instructions. So for this recipe, you are making a basic cookie dough and then you are just dividing it into six different bowls and adding your like mix-ins at that point. So I'm using my KitchenAid just to make it easier and you guys are gonna see that I'll separate it, add the mix-ins into six different bowls, get it on my cookie sheet, and this one was a hit. The kids really enjoyed it and I thought it was really cool. Instead of making like a huge batch of one type of cookie, this one allowed me to have the different flavors mixed in and like I said, the kids were huge fans. So now that I've got my cookies all baked up and into a cookie jar, I went ahead and the chocolate chips and white chocolate chips that I used, I don't like to keep them in the bags since I have all these extra containers. I feel like they last a lot longer. So I am just moving them into airtight containers and the chocolate chips were a little bit more than the container that I pulled out. So I have these little reusable bags that I just took a few handfuls off the top and put them into the little bag and that way they all fit better. Back to my KitchenAid. So I am adding a shredding attachment. You can do all sorts of stuff with this shredder. You can do vegetables. I'm using it for cheese. So in my last meal prep video, I mentioned that I had quite a few blocks of cheese that I wanted to shred up, but I only had time to get that one done in that video. And I just used my little handheld shredder. But if I'm doing a lot of cheese at once, <laughs> this was definitely a great investment. It shreds up my cheese so quick. So I had the two blocks and this is actually a first for me as well. 
I went ahead and normally I put all of my cheese into one bag and keep it in the fridge and we're pretty good about using it before it goes bad. But the last couple times I've purchased cheese, I feel like we're just not using it and it does get a little moldy before we end up using the entire bag. So for this time, I opted to pull out my quart size freezer bags again, the same ones I use for the tomatoes. And I labeled them because I did do two different types of cheese. I kept one bag in the fridge and then the rest of them I put in my freezer. I have never frozen cheese before, but everything that I hear and people that I know that have frozen cheese before say that it turns out great if you shred it instead of putting it into the freezer block form, shred it first, then get it in there and it is a perfect. So that is what I am doing. And here is all the cheese that I ended up with from those two blocks. All right, now you guys let me know what you think of when you hear the words meal prep. Maybe I should start saying food prep. I don't actually make a lot of meals. I food prep to make life a little easier for my family. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and that'll let me know to continue sharing as often as I am food prepping. I've got a house full of dogs right now, so if you guys hear water, they all just came in from outside, so they're drinking. But other than that, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Subscribe if you are new. I will have the last meal prep up here in the corner just in case you missed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.